Во студиото на Универзитетскот радио денес ќе имаме еден интересен гостин, амбасадорот на Британија во Македонија Чарлс Герет, со кого ми е чест и задоволство да разговарам денеска. Mr. Ambassador, welcome to the university, welcome to the university television and radio. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. First, I would like to ask you about your visit here at the university. Can you tell me about your purpose of your visit here in the Gotsadalchev University? Right. Yeah. Well, the one of the challenges for diplomats in any capital city is getting out of the capital city. We're, we're so focused on talking to our people in Skopje that we have to make an effort to get out. And Shtip, of course, is a very important town for Macedonia, and it's therefore an important part of, of my program of getting out to see the wider country of Macedonia. You see things with a different perspective when you look at it from a town like Shtip. And of course, coming to Shtip, which um, th there are many reasons to do that. I've had meetings this morning with the, with the mayor, I've been to see a, a project that we've been sponsoring, supporting here in Steep, and of course I couldn't come to Steep without coming to the university as well. How's going so far the project? The project's going well. The, 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 the project is an excellent project which looks into the question of how government spends money and how you can provide information on that to the people who need to know about it because it's their money that the government is spending. So you're going to have a lecture here at the university. Right. What are the ideas you would like to convey to the students regarding your lecture? Well, the title of the lecture is about diplomacy in the 21st century. And really what I'm going to do in the course of the, of the hour is speak quite briefly, for about 10 minutes, I think, about some aspects of, of my life as a diplomat and my perspective on diplomacy. Um, and then use that as, a, as, as, as an introduction to a, a kind of interactive session, a, a question and answer session, if you like, so that the conversation can follow exactly where the students themselves want to hear more about. I'm guessing they're uh, like to hear about your diplomatic career. So what is, uh, what is need to be taken to become a successful diplomat? Very good question, um, and not one I can answer in a minute, but I think Key things, which, which again I'll be talking about this afternoon, are um, an, an ability to collaborate with people. You, you can't achieve anything on your own. In today's world, you can't achieve anything as a single country. It's all about building alliances and collaborating with other people and with other countries. So that's one thing, collaboration. Another is communication. You have to be able to communicate effectively so you can persuade people and influence people, shape things and, and, and listen to people's experience. That's all about good communication. Um, and another thing I'd mention, and this is another C actually, collaboration, communication, change. Change is important. You have to be able to see the way that things are changing and to be able to respond to that. The world that I operate in today as ambassador in Skopje is very different from the world when I joined the Foreign Office a generation ago. So uh, how do you get these skills? Is there any school that you must uh, go to get these skills? Well, in, in Britain, um, we, take, we don't take specialists into the Foreign Office. We, we will take anyone who shows that they have got the, 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 the skills and the character to, to, to become a good diplomat, and then we shape them once they're in the Foreign Office. Um, we have recently set up a new diplomatic academy within the Foreign Office which aims to support people in developing themselves as, as, as good diplomats in negotiation technique, in communications techniques and so on. So yes, there's a lot of support within the organisation, but we don't specifically take people in. Are you dependent on the political parties in Britain? Great question. Um, no, we're not, actually. Um, the, the British Civil Service has a very strong tradition of, um, of, a, of being apolitical whilst in the Civil Service. So, so I, of course, vote as a, as a good citizen in the UK, but I don't tell anyone, um, except perhaps my wife, who I voted <laughs> for. Um, and that certainly doesn't affect the way that I do my job. Um, I serve the government of the day. So in my career in the Foreign Office, I have served a Labour government, I've served a Conservative government, I've served a coalition, and each time my job is simply to serve them to achieve their, their, their goals. Since we are on uh, university television, I have to ask you about the education system in our country. You are here for two years now. 
Uh, do you have enough time to perceive the situation in the Macedonian education? What is that maybe by you, you we need to uh, do anything uh, for our educational system? What uh, you would characterize as positive and is there anything missing in our educational system? Right, I, I, I would say that, um, that, that every educational system has things missing. Every educational system um, needs to find ways to, to strengthen and develop itself and, and Macedonia is no exception in that. Um, I, I've come across some, some really outstanding um, aspects of, of, of the educational system here. Um, a lot of the people that I meet, whether they're colleagues in the British Embassy or, 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 or Macedonian politicians or Macedonian officials or academics, they're, they're, they're acad their approach to academics is really quite extraordinarily good and they, they've obviously had a very strong education. Um, that said, I know that for the two years that I've been here, the, the, the question of, of how the, the government provides education for its citizens is, is a very hot topic and has been the subject of, of demonstrations in Skopje, has been the subject of wide public debate. And I see that as a good thing because no, there is no one um, way forward for any particular educational system. You need to find that way forward, you need to consult, you need to get different people's ideas in. And only that way can you be sure of, of, of really strengthening the system in a way that's good for the people. So, so I see that public debate as a very good thing for Macedonia right now. To what extent in this aspect is Great Britain engaging in supporting the Macedonian education? Uh, we all know that there are programs in primary school that have been adjusted to the Cambridge programs. Right. So in what extent do you support our educational system? Well, that, that particular um, scheme that you refer to, which is a, a new curriculum for the primary schools in Macedonia, designed by, by, by the Cambridge University Press, that's, that, that's to, to my mind, I've seen some of the, the, the books, um, I think that's a, that, that's a great system, but I haven't myself um, been involved in that because that was a, a, an initiative of the Department for Education, the Ministry for Education in Skopje. We do, though, um, collaborate quite um, extensively as a, as a country with Macedonia in the field of education, particularly through the British Council, which is also based in Skopje, who have a number of programmes um, especially around training, vocational training, and ensuring that the, the people operating within the educational system, the teachers and the administrators, have the skills they need um, in particular areas. And areas we've worked in have been around special needs education, so including people who perhaps have dyslexia or, or, or other difficulties around learning, and ensuring that a classroom environment is good for them as well, so that everyone can can be educated. That's one area. Another is working to ensure that the, the educational system is providing what um, the business sector in Macedonia needs out of the, the, the educational sector so that the, the right skills, people with the right skills are being pr produced at the age of 18 or the age of 22 or whenever business needs them. So uh, we all know that also Britain has one of the best universities in the world. How is that so? What is need to become a best university? Well, I think By that your opinion. I'm, I'm not a specialist in, <laughs> in, 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 in university development, but, um, but I've had the privilege of going through the, the university system in the UK. And, and it is, as you say, you know, one of the world's best systems. People look at it with envy. Um, we have, I think, something like four or five universities in the top 10 yes. rankings and something like sort of 15 or more in the top 50. So it's a very strong participation and it's not just universities like Oxford and Cambridge which everyone knows about it's also University College London, Imperial College London, King's College London and, London and, School and, of Economics. and the London School of Economics exactly so, so there are a number of very strong examples. I think we have um, a very open approach um, to, to education we allow our universities a lot of, of autonomy of, of independence to develop in the way that they see best um, that's one factor. Another factor is quite clearly that we do our teaching in the English language. Yes. Um, that's a natural advantage for us because it means that you get a lot of people coming to the, to the educational system in the UK both to teach or to do research or to be students. And more uh, literature sort of. is on English. And more is in English, exactly. So, so we have a natural advantage in that. But there are many other reasons as well.
So, uh, about the young people, we must say something about the young people. Do you consider young people a part of solution of cert to certain problems in uh, our country? And how much the embassy supports young people in Macedonia? I think, I think young people absolutely must be um, part of, a, of, of, of the resolution of any um, political or social or economic problem. Young, young people, of course, have um, all the ideas actually they you know the, the creative creativity among young people is is, is quite extraordinary um, you know they're, they're in, in almost every situation I can think of creativity among young people beats creativity among older people <laughs> so so get younger people in to get the ideas of course you know the, the young people are who the country we're building is going to be for so you know we must consult them and must draw them into decision making and, um, and, 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 and development of solutions um, young people also have tremendous energy as well, you know, I mean, sort of when, when you know, I'm, I'm 52 years old now and beginning to feel less energy than I used to have, you know, don't rely on people of my age, get the young people who've got the energy in and you'll find solutions, better solutions faster. Do you have any particular programs that are for young people from your ambassador? ambassador? We, we, have, we have a flagship program for, for young people and, and, and anyone listening to this or watching this I would, I would urge them to apply um, to the Chevening Scheme, which is our flagship scholarship scheme worldwide. Um, we have, last year, we, we, we gave nine scholarships to, to young Macedonians to study for, for MAs, for, for postgraduate degrees in the UK. Um, they'll be coming back to, to, to Macedonia soon. I'm looking forward to welcoming them back and hearing their stories about how they develop themselves in the UK. It's a fantastic scheme, not, not just because it gives you free education which is supported with accommodation costs and travel costs in the UK, but it also makes you a member of one of the best clubs in Macedonia. I'd say the best club in Macedonia. People who have been through this system who are now flying high in their chosen careers. It's, it's a great network to be part of. And of course, it's not just Macedonia because you reach out to students from Hong Kong, from China, from Nigeria, from Russia, from America. It's, it's a fantastic scheme. So, uh, are there uh, plans for future cooperation between the Embassy and our university in the field of education or any, in any other field? Well, I would hope so. I mean, this is, this is a great university. I've, you know, it has a, a, a tremendous reputation. Um, and, um, and, you know, we, we will work with educational establishments in Macedonia because, as I said at the beginning of this, collaboration and communication is absolutely key to um, diplomatic success. So, so we look forward to working with the university here in the future and, um, and, and to welcoming you to Skopje whenever you're up there. Uh, have you had the chance to get to know Macedonia privately? I know that you're a great fan of cycling. Mm. Uh, have you had the chance to enjoy your hobby while in Macedonia? Definitely. I, I'm, I'm privileged to live in a house which is at the bottom of a hill, which, uh, of a road which goes all the way up to the top of the Vodno, the hill in, in, in Skopje. And that, um, you, I, I cycle on it. it, it takes me about an hour to get from the bottom to the top, which is just fantastically packaged exercise in the most beautiful environment with trees and views and bird singing. It's, it, it just simply couldn't be better. I, I also cycle with a number of, of clubs based in Skopje um, on, on long trips around the country. Um, it's the best way to see, to, to see Macedonia, incidentally, because you're, um, you, you, you have the time to, to, to admire everything that's around you. And I'm looking forward to inviting some friends from the UK to Macedonia this summer to do some cycling around Lake Ochrid and, um, and also at, at Popovashapka. That's great. And finally, when can we accept uh, to travel to Britain without visas? Well, do you know what? Um, I, I'm afraid that I don't have the decision-making power on this. The British Embassy doesn't have the decision-making power on it. These are decisions that are taken by a different part of government in London. But, um, but I am your strongest supporter in this. I, they, nothing would please me more than, be able, the, the, than being able to say to Macedonians that they can now travel to the UK without having to buy a visa. Um, because I see that as a, as a block on more contact between our two countries. So I... I, I do everything I can to support that, but they, they, there, is a, there is a policy which currently means that Macedonians must um, have a visa to go to the UK. I can't promise when that will be 
removed, but at some stage in the future it will, because our two countries both belong in the European Union, and within the European Union we have freedom of movement. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for the interview. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much indeed.